and welcome back to Eden's Angora. My name is Alyssa Denson and I'm here to show you everything Angora Rabbits and Fiber Arts. I'm finally feeling better enough to show my face on camera. However, I am still sick and I'm sorry if that affects my voice quality, which I'm sure it does. However, I just sheared um, Eclair, her belly specifically, since she's about to kindle and it was a great opportunity for me to just show you what I'm doing with her belly wool. So let's get into it. I have here my hand cards um, and someone actually requested a video on how, how do you process German Angora fiber if you don't have a drum carter. And this is the answer. Um, these are actually from Howard's hand cards. Um, not the back of the paddle. I just found that at an antique store and how cool is that? And I stapled the Howard's hand carter um, replacement teeth to it. And I got the highest TPI or teeth per inch that they offer. Now I'm actually cleaning this out with my Strauch um, drum carter cleaner, but you can use a slicker brush or really multiple different things to clean out your hand cards. Now, <clears throat> something about Angora is, um, <laughs> Angora is very fine and can rip and break. It is strong for how soft it is, but you do have to be careful not to over card it. Um, so today I am going to be doing 100% Angora, but you can certainly blend it on hand cards if you want to as well. I do find that it helps to get all your sheep's wool in order first before you put on the Angora, again, so you don't over card. Okay, so this is um, Eclair's belly wool, and it's probably uh, two inches maybe staple length. It's not very long. So this is gonna be felting wool. It is still great wool, but it's not really, in my opinion, the best for spinning. So I'm going to prepare an adorable little roll leg for felting artists. So the first thing you wanna do is lay your fiber out on one card. And I usually do a pass back and then forth. All right. And then you're gonna use this other paddle and comb it. Make sure I don't knock this off. So I start at the tips here and then just bring it off in layers. Work your way back. And I do a little bit of a lifting motion you try to get as much of it from the one card to the other as you can. Okay, now you'll see this one. Now that is far from a loaded uh, carter. So I'm going to put another layer on the first carter. And just, there are a million ways to card. So this is how I do it. But don't feel like you can't do it whatever way you want to do it. So now I'm, I'm going about here. I'm not going to start at the tip again and grab it. I'm going to kind of work my way back like this. Now, a lot of people will pass their fiber back and forth between the paddles, but I don't like doing that uh, with Angora because what is the purpose of carding? Isn't it to get all of your fiber laying in the same direction? So I don't feel the need to pass it back and forth a million times. Now I'm doing kind of a long 
of just a few long strokes to make sure that fiber is all laying in the same direction. And now I'm gonna take it off this paddle, but I realize I don't have anything to do that with right in front of me, so I'm just gonna pause this video for a second. Okay guys, so I could not find what I was looking for. Um, ideally, you want a wooden dowel as long as the carter or something like that. Some people pinch it between two pencils, but I don't like to roll my roll eggs that tight because it seems like uh, they don't spin off as nicely. So this shuttle from my mini loom seems to be working, but really it doesn't matter what you use. Um, that produced a nice little roll egg right there. I like it a lot. It's nice and loose. Um, so what you're gonna do is just start curling your fiber around your wooden dowel and pull on it with your fingers. And eventually you'll get it to roll up. You'll roll it up, up each side of your carter. I like to tuck in the ends here. I'm trying to get it as even as possible. And you can always go back for more fiber if it's not even. Okay, so we roll it up. Then we see we have a little blank spot right here. So I'm gonna target that spot. And I will add, I don't know if I already said this, but this was a video by request on how to process German Angora fiber without a drum carter. Now, German Angora fiber can spin quite nicely, just completely raw. However, it it's shorn, so it does have some um, cut edges. And for that reason, it spins smoother if you card it first. So nice. So that's what we're doing. We're carding it. We can blend it on the the hand cards. You can really do anything that you can do on a drum carder with hand cards. It just takes more time, but that's okay. A lot of people like it better. It's just, it's a meditative thing. Then I pull on this and make it nice and smooth and even, make sure it's gonna spin really nicely. All right, and then while I was off camera, I also filled up my other hand card so that we could try to demonstrate this twice. And this is unwashed raw German. So I just went out and took this off of Eclair, brought it inside in that container I showed you, and this is how we're processing it and getting it ready to spin. That's one of my favorite things about Angora versus other wools is it's already very clean if you've kept your rabbits clean. Um, there's not a whole lot that goes into processing it before spinning, and that's just part of the magic of it. Is it it's not very labor intensive. You don't normally have to pick it because you're, you're picking your rabbits regularly. If they have something on them, odds are you're picking it off when you're giving them all of the loads of attention that they need from week to week and blowing out their coats, which I wish people did that with sheep, <laughs> but I do have sheep and I don't know if they would stand for it. All right, so here's another great roll egg. And honestly, I think I'm getting along with this dowel just fine. I like it because it's wooden and it's grippy so maybe they're not really tight roll eggs, but I don't need them to be. Now we're gonna go back in our fiber supply because I'd like to process all of this belly wool today and list this fiber from Eclair in my Etsy shop for felting artists. So we're not gonna overload our carter. And then sometimes I'll even put my hand on it, kind of hold it back, just let it go little by little onto the opposite hand card. Working our way back, right? We're not gonna start and just 
rake through it because that creates what are called or known as neps. They're like little tears in the fiber where tiny mats form. We're not looking to cause any neps. We're just getting our fibers aligned, right? So like I said, most people would pass it back and forth uh, between the carters at this point. I don't want to do that at all. I just want to rake through once really thoroughly. All my fibers are lined up. Then I'm going to take my little tool here, my little dowel, fold the fiber up, try to get it off these teeth a little bit first. And wrap it around. Now I'm pulling down slightly as I'm doing this. And I'm letting the carter comb the fiber as it's going around, which is making it a tighter roll egg and also making sure that those fibers are lined up. So that didn't go perfectly, um, which is okay. I'm just gonna comb these again. And it would go a lot smoother if they were prime length fibers of about three inches, but they're not. They are about one and a half to two inch. Really nice belly wolves. <laughs> All right, get a couple rolls on here. Now it's really stuck on there. Comb it. and do it again. So I hope you found this helpful. I know it's not perfect, it's not ideal, and I don't hand card often, so I'm not looking the best at it. <laughs> but this is how you I process my fiber without my drum carter. And it's a lot less of an investment as well Hand cards are still going to run you around $100 for a good pair, but that's far less than the $750 that the Strauch drum carter is running right now. Um, so if you're new at Angora's, you might just want to try these. I have two pairs of hand cards that I've kept from when I first started and they're just very sentimental to me. It reminds me of how people used to take their time doing things. You know, the drum carter is more efficient, um, but this is kind of more the old way of doing things, which is part of the reason why we hand spin, I think, is it, it connects us to a slower time, maybe to our ancestors, um, Maybe to just something in our soul that, that wants something real and something slow and something that is not efficient, that is, is art. And I do find that it's very calming doing hand card work. It can be frustrating as well. <laughs> But in general, it's it's very calming and really allows you to connect with your fiber. All right, this is my last one I'm going to do on camera because I want to keep this video fairly short for you guys. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. And any other video requests or things you want to see, um, different fiber prep or Angora related topics, I would be happy to cover them in a future video. And as always, if you like this video, found it entertaining watching me fumble through this, please uh, give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more things like this. And these are just absolutely beautiful. And like I said, they're gonna go in my Etsy shop. So starting tomorrow, September 29th, 
2022. If you're close to that time and you're a felting artist and you'd like to buy these knowing that they were lovingly hand prepared from my pet rabbit Eclair, who I love dearly, then please visit my Etsy shop. Um, I should also have some spinning quality um, roll eggs and bats from my drum carter in my Etsy shop as well. So feel free to visit. And as always, thank you so much for your support. There you are. <laughs> and take care until next time, guys. Bye. Thank you.